Hello everyone and welcome to our Sunday service. Today is the third Sunday of Lent and we're going to hear in the Gospels the story of Jesus overturning the tables of the money changers in the temple. And throughout Lent we're hearing from members of our ministry team in the Gospel reading and the reflection. Today we have Kate Hutchinson who is our reader in our parishes. So we look forward to hearing from Kate in a few moments time. For now, as we gather in spirit to worship God, let us begin in prayer. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Forgive what we have been, Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Help us to do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, 
Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Tables overturned, money scattered everywhere, birds and animals sent scurrying away. What does this say to you? To me, it says one word, meltdown. All of us, no matter who we are, can only be pushed so far before we snap. And this is what happened to Jesus. He had one huge meltdown. But that's okay, because through this episode, everyone can identify with Jesus. We can align ourselves with Jesus and say that he is like us. He is human. He is totally human. Up until this happened, all we saw was the divinity of Jesus. Jesus healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, curing lepers, restoring life to the dead, even calming the raging seas. This was the divine Jesus. But this Jesus, an ordinary man having a meltdown, well, this is something that we can all identify with. He is one of us. But we have to ask ourselves, why did such a gentle man, a loving man, react in this way? The Bible doesn't tell us why. Instead, we have to look around at what was happening at that time. Passover was getting close. The city was overflowing with people and Roman soldiers to keep those people in order. There was something brewing in the air. Something astounding was about to happen. The air was thick with anticipation, and yet here was this gentle, charismatic man who, unbeknown to his followers, was carrying such a weight on his shoulders, and then there were the priests of the temple, people who were forever goading Jesus, trying to trip him up, trying to find fault with him, and why? Because they were all afraid of him, not physically afraid, but afraid because he threatened their status, their way of life. When asked by what authority he had to wreak havoc in the temple, his reply was, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. A temple that had taken 46 years to build, and yet here was a man who could rebuild it in three days. These were the people who had pushed him to breaking point. These were the people who should have been nurturing the people, listening to the people and talking to God on their behalf. But no, these people, these priests put themselves above God. These were the people who thought more about the laws and rituals than they did about the people or about the true worshipping of God. They had a very lucrative business going on in the temple and they didn't want to see it changed in any way. So this man had to go. This man had to be destroyed. When Jesus spoke about destroying the temple, he wasn't speaking about the building. He was speaking about himself. He was speaking about his impending death and resurrection. This was the burden that he was carrying. Can you imagine what this must have felt like? There is no wonder that he had a meltdown. There are many people in this world who try to be bigger than God, who try to act like God. You only have to look at Russia, Myanmar, Hong Kong. But remember, nobody, and I mean nobody, is bigger or better than God. We need to let the scales fall from our eyes. God is our here and now and our future. Many people today worry about the churches being closed because of this pandemic. But the church isn't a building. Church is the people. We 
are the church. This is what Jesus was trying to demonstrate, and nobody can put themselves above God. God is our life. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, hear our prayers. We pray for our nation, for all the nations of the earth, and for all who govern and judge. We pray for those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror, and those without a place to lay their head. Make them hear of joy and gladness, that they may rejoice in your good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole church, all leaders and ministers, and all the holy people of God. In this season of Lent, we pray for those who are preparing for baptism, and those seeking to deepen their faith and discipleship may all be given the grace and strength to repent and grow closer to you, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community and those among whom we live and serve. We pray for those in the teaching, healthcare and caring professions at this time. May our communities know your grace and strength in the face of life's challenges. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress, and those who are lonely. Give them the joy of your saving help and sustain them with your bountiful spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and who have entered into the land of eternal light and your abiding peace. May they know your presence and your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, your Son Jesus showed us that your house should be a place of prayer for all people. Grant us the strength and wisdom to be a people consumed with prayer and zeal for you this day and always. And so we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and for evermore. Amen.